have on your assignment that says use all the tools in your toolbox to find the real zeros. What we're going to start with is the rational zero theorem. Okay, because to find our real zeros, we need to sum things to start with. I can't factor an x to the third, and it doesn't follow the quadratic formula. So what I have to go with is I have to find some zeros to break that polynomial down a little more. So we use the rational zeros theorem to find out what our possibilities are. So remember, we write down the factors of the constant on the end. factors of 20. It has a few more than some of those earlier examples we did. Okay. Over the factors of the leaning coefficient, which happens to just be 1. So my possibilities are 20, 10, 5, 4, 2, and 1, both the positive and negative. What you want to do is just go ahead and pick one of those to start with and do synthetic division. We will know it's a 0 if when we come out the end it's 0 as our remainder. Um, so here my coefficients are 1, and then we have a 0x squared, because the x squared term was missing, negative 21, and negative 20. Let's just pick one to try. Let's try 1. So again, you drop the first number straight down, and then you multiply. 1 times 1 is 1. You add those terms. And you multiply and put it under the next number. So again, 1 times 1 is 1. And I add to get negative 20. 1 times negative 20 is negative 20. In the end, my remainder is negative 40. So 1 is not one of my zeros. Okay. So then I go and I test another one. Let's try negative 1 instead. Maybe that one will work. Okay, so I should not bother with um, one again at all, because I know it's not a zero. Okay, do our synthetic division. Multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply. Oh, look, this time I get zero as my remainder. That tells me negative one is one of my zeros. So back up here, where I'm writing my answers down, I know negative one is one of the answers. Now, should I continue just testing things? For this one, no. Okay. Once you get it down to, we started with a third degree. Remember when you do synthetic division, when you divide once, and we did right here with our negative one, we divided once. For every time you divide, it drops one exponent. Um, so instead of degree three, it's going to be degree two. And we just use those, um, use those as our coefficients. Okay. So I'm going to take this up here, and I have 1x squared minus 1x minus 20. So basically what I've done is, so far, here are my factors of that polynomial. Negative 1 was this 0, okay? If I set that equal to 0 and solve, I get negative 1. So what we do is we take what we came out with and see if we can solve it. Now that it's a squared, we absolutely can. We can either factor it if it factors, or use the quadratic formula if it doesn't. This one happens to factor as x minus 5 times x plus 4. And then we set each of those factors equal to 0 and solve them. And we have our final two zeros. So we get x is 5 and x is negative 4. So our answers are negative 1, 5, and negative 4. Again, we couldn't have done that without our synthetic division. We have to find one zero first to break our poly polynomial down to an x squared so we can actually do some factoring or some, some of the quadratic formula. Okay, next question. We're going to start the same way. We're going to use the rational zero theorem. We're going to write down our possible rational zeros. So we put the factors of 3 over the factors of 2. And we write down those combinations. So we have 3 over 2. 3 over 1 would be 3. And then we have 1 over 2. And 1 over 1 would be 1. So here's our eight possibilities. Um, we're going to go ahead and test those. So we just choose one to start with. 
we write down our synthetic division. What one do you want to do? I'm going to try one again, see if one works. Um, go ahead and go through the process of the synthetic division. Oh, and lucky me, okay? One worked, my very first one. Awesome. So over here where I'm writing my answers, I know one is a zero because it came out with a remainder of zero here. Um, and then again, what we're going to do is we're going to take what's left over because this started as third degree, dividing at one time drops it to squared. So I have 2x squared plus 7x plus 3. Okay. All right. And what I want to do from here is I want to go ahead and um, factor that if I can factor it. So if it doesn't factor or if you're not comfortable factoring this type, you can always use the quadratic formula. Okay? Um, this does factor, however, it factors as 2x plus 1 times x plus 3. I would set each of those equal to 0 and solve them to find my last two zeros. And I get x is negative 1 half and x is negative 3. Okay? So my answers are 1, negative 1 half, and negative 3. Those are all three real zeros for this polynomial. All and that time I just got lucky and my first one worked. It's always good when that happens. All right, here is yet another that we can't factor to solve it because it's a third degree. So we use our rational zero theorem to write down our possible zeros. So factors of 6 over the factors of 1. But uh, the only factor of 1 is 1. So my possibilities are 6, 3, 2, and 1, both the positive and the negative. Um, you just, again, you just start by checking a number. Um, choose any number you'd like. I'm going to start and I'll try one. You write down the coefficients of your polynomial and go from there. We multiply and add, multiply and add, and nope, I got nine instead of zero. So I know one is not one of my zeros. I'm going to try negative one. Okay, and this is just kind of what you go through, you try until you get one that works. Um, this one gives me 5 instead of 0. Um, notice I'm getting um, kind of close to a right answer. Let's try the 2s. Let's see if the 2s work. Okay, I'm going to try 2 with my synthetic division. 2. Oh. Two didn't work. Let's try negative two. Okay, and see, and this is where I should have been paying attention. Notice when I did one, do you see how I got um, all the same? All of these were, were positive. They were all the same sign. So that told me one, that's where the upper bound might come in handy. Um, that told me one was an upper bound, and I shouldn't have even tried two because they all came out as the same sign. Let's try negative 2, okay? Because negative 1 wasn't a lower bound. For that to happen, you have to have alternating signs on the negative. Let's try negative 2. Um, three. Ah, oh, awesome. Negative 2 gives me a 0 at the end, so I know negative 2 is one of my answers. It's one of my zeros. Okay, and then, oh, it was third degree, so just defining one zero knocks it down to a squared. So I'm going to write down 1x squared minus x plus 3. We set that equal to zero and try to solve it by either factoring or um, using quadratic formula. This one doesn't factor. There are no factors of 3 that add to equal negative 1 in the middle there, so we use the quadratic formula. Um, remember, A is that number in front of X squared, B is the number in front of X, and C is the constant. 
and here is the formula. You'll want to memorize this. You're going to lose, use it so much in this class. Okay, so I have negative of negative 1 plus or minus the square root of negative 1 squared minus 4 times 1 times 3 all over 2 times a, which was 1. Now, as I simplify that, the reason I'm doing this is because um, we can have zeros that are still real, but not necessarily rational. I get 1 minus 12 over 2, but notice what happens. I get the square root of negative 11, which makes this an imaginary number, and we only want real numbers in this lesson. The next lessons will want imaginary, but for now, we don't. So our only answer is negative 2 because my other two zeros were um, 1 plus or minus i root 11. Not real, but imaginary. All right, here is yet another. And here are our toolbox items. I would like to say also, um, if you can factor out a common factor, that's always good to start. So looking at this polynomial, I can see that they all have x's. Okay, and there's no constant term on the end without an x. So that tells me I can factor out an x. In fact, here I can factor out an x squared, because they all have at least x squared. So that's what I'm going to do first, because if we can factor, that's going to reduce our possibilities, and, and so that's a great thing to do. So here I have this. I'm trying to find zeros. I factor out an x squared, so I can set that equal to 0 to solve. I set my other factor, 5x squared, minus 2x minus 1 equal to 0. I want to solve both of those. Well, this will just give me x equals 0. Notice it's multiplicity 2, so basically I have 0, 0. Um, the graph would touch there, you know, just the basics we've learned about multiplicity. This one here, I would factor if it factors, because notice it's a squared term, so I'm not going to have to mess with rational zeros, because we know that squares, we can either factor or use the quadratic formula. This does not factor, so we use the quadratic formula. So there's my a, my b, and my c. So I have negative and negative 2, plus or minus the square root of negative 2 squared minus 4 times a was 5, times c was negative 1. When you're doing the quadratic formula, always be super careful with your signs, okay? Negative can mess you up. All right, so as I simplify this, negative and negative makes that a positive 2 on the front. Inside, I have positive 4 plus 20, all over 10. That gives me 2 plus or minus the square root of 24 over 10. Now, we want to simplify as much as we can. 24 doesn't have a whole number square root. It's not a perfect square. However, um, in Algebra 2, you should have learned that to simplify radicals, notice 24 is the same as 4 times 6. Okay? 4 has a square root. We want to bring out as much as we can. The square root of 4 is 2, so I bring out that as a 2. 6 doesn't have a whole number square root, so we leave it inside. And that should be review. Um, I thought I'd go over it. And then we can reduce, because 10 goes, or excuse me, 2 goes in each of those. So my other two zeros are 1 plus or minus the square root of 6 over 5. Okay? So I have three zeros. Four, actually. I have 0 twice, and then I have 1 plus the square root of 6 over 5, and 1 minus the square root of 6 over 5. So my answers are 0 and 1 plus or minus root 6 over 5. 1 plus or minus root 6 over 5, those are real numbers. They're not rational, so they wouldn't have showed up when we wrote down our possible rational zeros, which is why it's important to still <laughs> remember how to do the quadratic formula. So here is my answer. All right. The next